Dragon is the most powerful, epic type in all of Pokemon, but for some reason in Scarlet and Violet, the only representation it gets in the story is this. It's not even really a dragon, it says so right there in the name. Today I'm gonna fix that by becoming Paldea's very first dragon type, gym leader. And to make sure I'm really ready for the job at the end of all of this, I'm gonna be playing with a bunch of extra rules to make the game even harder. We begin our journey as the heartthrob of Johto and certified dragon type expert, Claire. Unfortunately, it seems like we might be in a bit of a Legends Arceus time travel situation here because we wake up and it's our first day of middle school? Oh no! Looks like we're gonna have to go to the school dance, and looks like we're gonna have to earn our gym leader status the hard way. We mentally prepare for our awkward life as a preteen, then head down to our neighbor's house to pick out our starter. You... are not a dragon. Is this... are you a dragon? This could be a dragon. Ah, uh, you are in fact not a dragon. Nice try, little man. We begin to make our way to school, but on the way, we come across something very interesting. Ooh. Now that is a dragon. We'll be a gym leader in no time with this one. Unfortunately, at this point, all this dragon is useful for is being a noble steed. So we're forced to attend our first day of school completely dragonless. Embarrassing. After we're freed from our educational prison, we begin the hunt for our first team member. Like I said before, dragons are easily the most powerful, legendary, epic type in the world of Pokemon, so we should be able to start out with something good, right? While dragons may end up looking like this, they start out a little bit more like this. At this point in the game, the only two dragons we can actually catch are Gibble and Applin. Ah, yes! A mighty apple dragon. This will surely build my power. <laughs> yes, this apple is somehow half dragon. As strong as these two may look, we're in a little bit of trouble here. Our first opponent is the bug type gym leader, Katie, and her bugs are just waiting to absolutely devour our sweet little apple. But not all hope is lost. Thanks to the open world of Scarlet and Violet, we're able to head over to the lag tree thicket where we can find both a sweet apple and a tart apple, which just so happen to be the exact items that Applin needs in order to evolve. We have two choices with our evolution here. We can either use the sweet apple to evolve it into Appleton or the tart apple to evolve it into Flapple. We decide to go for Flapple, which is too sour to be palatable by these bugs and also gets access to the flying type move acrobatics, which is insanely strong in this first gym. But before we can battle the gym leader, we of course need to do the gym challenge, which turns out to be a little bit of dragon riding practice. I'm an expert pilot of my dragon. Yes! We did it! We finish up the challenge, then we realize that we may have been tricked. It seems they placed the practice area right next to a field full of horrifying fairy types. Dear God, stay away from me! We narrowly escape this trap with our lives, then head in to face the gym leader, Katie. You're gonna fall under my might. You think that bugs could stand up to the might of my dragons? I have a flying apple! What are you gonna do about it? We swiftly dispatch her first two bugs with a couple acrobatics, then her ace Teddy Ursa survives our next strike and lands a super effective fury cutter. Not to worry, we fire back with the second acrobatics to take the fight home. Katie's bugs were definitely not prepared for my boy Bapple. You may be wondering how exactly one goes about becoming a gym leader. I researched the lore of Pokemon and it isn't exactly clear on this subject. So I took a little bit of creative liberty and laid out three goals that I need to accomplish to become a gym leader in Paldea. First, and most obviously, I need to obtain all 18 badges of the region by defeating the gym leaders and the other big bosses. Second, I need to tame every dragon line available in the game by catching them and evolving them to their final form. And third, I need to complete a heroic act, preferably one that saves the world, but we'll get to that later. With no time to waste, we get to work on our second goal. Oh, level 16, perfect! Another very small, adorable dragon to add to my army. You just give them a little bit though, they're gonna grow big and strong and you'll, you'll see. You'll all see. Oh, what's that? A foul beast needs to be slain, huh? Oh, you big boy. You can run, but you can't hide. Trip the big boy. Does this one shot? Ooh, it one shots. Oh my God, destruction. Rock smash? <laughs> Imagine. Watch your feet, cloth. Hope that you don't trip and fall onto your back and then 
die. With the titan slain, we're able to head into its cave and obtain a strange herb. Feeding this herb to our Coridon, we realize that it has the ability to make our dragon even stronger. Our steed's strength grows as we head to face the second gym leader, Brassius. Imagine using these as your Pokemon, grass types. <laughs> Much like his gym leader buddy Katie, Brassius is not at all prepared to deal with the Flapple with acrobatics. I mean, imagine, imagine using that Pokemon and not Flapple. We one shot his first two Pokemon without any issue, then he sends in his ace pseudo Wudo, who terastalizes into a grass type. This makes it vulnerable to our acrobatics, so we're able to trade a few blows with it to take it out. <laughs> Excuse me, old man, I have dragons to catch. You wouldn't understand. We get word of another large beast on the loose, so we head over to slay it to add to our gym leader resume. Along the way, we find yet another dragon to tame and add to our team. I don't know about you, but a little mushy ball of slime is not exactly what I had in mind when I set out to become a dragon type gym leader. Anyway, we arrive at the home of the next titan, but find that it has taken extreme measures in order to keep us away. Try as you might with your boulders. You won't keep me away. Watch. As I cast your boulders aside. Like they're nothing! We're able to use our expert dragon riding skills to navigate our way up this hill and battle the beast on the top of the mountain. We decide to give our cute little boy Axie a chance against this big bird. With the help of Nackley, we're able to clutch it out on one HP and finish this thing with a dragon claw. Ooh, teeth clutching it up, no pluck. Rock throw doesn't kill? Oh my god, he's so clutch! Yes! Dragon Claw, yes! We still have yet to have a death. Yeah! Oh, he's so cute! We head into the Titan's cave where we find another stalk of Herba Mystica, which allows our dragon mount to grow stronger yet. After lunch, we catch another little cuddly thing that supposedly evolves into a dragon. Then we get word of a rogue bunch of students who are causing trouble who go by the name of Team Star. We declare them as our enemies and wage war upon their bases in the name of justice. We storm the first base with our large, threatening beasts of war. Eventually, we've committed enough murder in their base that the leader is forced to rear his ugly head. We're able to take out his Bisharp without too much issue, but then we have our first experience battling a Team Star Revivroom. We can torque? Do we live that? No. There's no chance. Okay. Ugh, you hate to get hit by a metal sound. You hate to be doing no damage at all. Metal sound, maybe? Snarl misses? Oh. These are just the, the licks that you take on your way to being a Dragon Master. That's just, this is just part of the process. Unless Teeth can clutch it. I've seen Teeth win these. Metal Sound misses. Beautiful. Oh my, we just need two more. Teeth clutches this. No, oh my God. <laughs> teeth clutches. Let's go. Dragon too strong. Hold on. Who gave Team Star gym badges? Anyway, from here our quest continues out into the open fields outside of Lavincia, where we're able to add the first new dragon to our team. Then we head into the gym in Lavincia, where we're rudely interrupted by some girl. I'm not exactly sure who this girl is, but she seems to think that she's our rival, which means that she thinks that she's our equal. Judging by how our battle goes, that is certainly not the case. The Dozer, oh my god. God, that one shot. Is that the duck starter promoting a credit card <laughs> in the back? There's a there's a fictional credit card ad in this. If we one shot Rock Ruff, we got a one shot. Yeah. After dispatching our strange stalker, it's time for another gym. Imagine spending your life creating content on the internet. That would be embarrassing. We complete the virality test, evolve our Gibble, then move on into our battle against Iono. Cyclozar takes out her Watra with a couple breaking swipes, then she sends in her Luxio, who also falls to our new dragon. Next up is her Belly Bolt, who tanks a few hits from our Cyclozar, but these breaking swipes drop its attack to the point where we're able to safely swap to Gabite and finish it with a couple bulldozes. Finally, she sends in her Ace Miss Magus. With its Terra Electric type and ability to levitate, this thing can be a serious problem problem. Thankfully, we have a bit of a stinky solution. We stay in against Miss Magus, but what we do... <laughs> oh, oh, what we do. We sand attack. We hit it with white, hot kernels of sand into its ghostly little eyes. Make it unable to see. Yes. Yes, blind him! Imagine hitting your attacks. Never hit himself in confusion, ever. Not one singular... I vouched for you. 
This is a bit of cheese. God, imagine being able to hit your attacks. Uh, sounds nice, doesn't it? Uh, <laughs> uh, the gym leaders in this region? Embarrassing. Frankly, embarrassing. If your name is Claire, tell me, do you seek be to become a champion? No, I seek to become a gym leader and set this region straight. After networking with the champion, we continue our quest by going to claim the fire type badge from the next team star leader, Mela. Going into this, we were a little bit concerned because of her rev of room and its propensity to do massive damage. So we gear up by grabbing the TM for rain dance and teaching it to our Gumi. After we kick up the downpour on turn one, we take out her Torkoal without any issue, then swap around the team to bear Barely defeat her hot rod. After bringing this young lady to justice, we get word of another great beast north of Lavincia. Are we sure this is the guy? Can it go taste so good seasoned by my toad school? Oh my god, Arvin, we're not gonna eat him! What the fuck? We swiftly dispatch this fiend without any need for Arvin's help and boost our Karaidon's power even further. Then we make our way all the way to the next gym, but suddenly... Hey, wait, where are you going? We try to chase down the rogue gym litter, but it seems the wild Pokemon in the area are conspiring to slow us down as much as possible. How did I touch that Gogo? But no matter, before long we wrangle Kofu and bring him back to his gym to finally face us. Who wins? A gym leader with decades of battling experience and a team of carefully chosen Pokemon, or one small flying apple? You're pathetic and you're dead. Flapple may not be the dragon that we want necessarily, but it's really turned out to be the dragon that we need in the early parts of this game. Up to this point, it's been pretty smooth sailing, right? This region's pathetic bosses have had no answer for our tiny little dragons. So we cruise right in to face the next team star leader without really thinking too much about it. I mean, what could possibly go wrong? Do we live in the Iron Head? No chance, yeah. Uh, do we live in the Iron Head? No chance, yeah. Oh, a one shot. There's no way you can win this. Let's try that again, shall we? Toxic land? That is shock. That's so unlucky. What the? Why is this fight so hard? We try this battle a couple more times with a few different strategies. We try to set up with Dragon Dance. That doesn't work. We try some fancy stuff setting up with a substitute with Shed Tail from Cyclozar. That doesn't work. We try some other stuff that I don't even really understand watching it back and that definitely doesn't work. Ideally, we don't get toxic on this turn. Since there are no more dragons we can currently catch given the level cap, we're sort of stuck here until we can figure out a solution for this fight. We keep trying over and over with increasingly more complicated plans until we realize that maybe we've been overcomplicating this whole thing. So after we take out his lead skun tank with Flapple and Gumi, we start throwing everything we have at this guy. Kim, does this if a high roll? Yes! And then now we get the leftovers heal and we get to hit the rev of room without flinching don't flinch okay do we get another attack oh that one shot this is the play is this the play i think it is to lower the attack we need to lower the attack as much as possible flame charge oh we resist that oh my god that's so good for it to go to for flame charge oh we're gonna fail shed tail aren't we oh it poisoned what the heck we should have go gone for breaking swipe Oh, shit, skin insta-heals! Wait, breaking swipe might be the play. It might save us. We gotta try for the bulldoze. We get insta-poison, though. Ouch! Spin out? Do we live this, maybe? <gasps> we lived? <gasps> wait. Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Leftovers heals before toxic. Oh, my God. We might get, we get another bulldoze off. Yes, Axu might be actually able to clutch this. Come on, teeth. Oh, and we have the, the berry. We cured the poison. Wait, I'm I'm actually a genius. This is why I'm gonna be a gym leader. 
because I'm a genius. Imagine. This is easy. One more. One more. This is it. The clutch from Teeth. Teeth is the most clutch Pokemon. Let's go. Now that we've busted up another team star base, we can chip away at our second goal by adding a couple new ferocious members to the team. And from here, we head in to face the next gym leader, Larry. It's an unfortunate reality, but Larry really doesn't have too much he can do against our full team of dragons. After the battle, we're approached by this random girl who won't leave us alone and forced into a battle which goes about as well as every other one we've had up to this point. We move on to the top of Glossiato Mountain, and along the way, we're able to tame a dino. Then we evolve teeth before facing the next gym leader, Rhyme. We lead with Cyclozar and Fracture against her Mimikyu and Binette, and on turn one, we get a horrible surprise. Oh, Mimikyu's immune to it, I forgot, because of fairy type. We proceed to get smacked with an icy wind from Bennett, but we finish it with a crunch on the next turn. From here, Rhyme sends in her Houndstone, which is terrifying because it has the fairy type move Play Rough. But not to worry, we have RNG on our side. Play Rough? Misses? Ha! Huh? Oh, I killed it. Uh-oh. Unfortunately, we're not super happy about killing it on that turn because we wanted to take both it and her Mimikyu out on the same turn so that her ace Toxtricity would come in alone. But now that whole plan is out the window. To make matters even worse, the Toxtricity is able to live through our attacks on the next turn, and the crowd is so amazed with this big funny hat that both her Pokemon get a boost to every single one of their stats. This is not looking good. With that boost, this Toxtricity is now a massive damage machine pumping out toxic sound waves against both of our Pokemon. I don't even know if we're going to be able to kill it now. Oh my god, she's getting more buffs? No! This hyper voice is so much damage. No, dude. Oh, it didn't even kill the toxicity. Let me not lose this. Speed. Oh, plus speed is crazy. Plus speed is so clutch. How did it know I needed that? You're crazy for that. Oh, you're crazy for that. Okay, at least we don't have to take a hit from the Toxicity. I think we can 2v1 a Mimikyu. Yes, it's attacking the wrong Pokemon. Yes. No, we kill on the next turn. As long as it doesn't crit us, we're good. Yeah, let's go. We clutched it narrowly squeaking that one out, we head to the desert to give the next titan a little taste of our apple and power up our Coridon yet again. My only question is, how many herbs do I have to feed this thing before it does something useful? Anyway, from here we make our way to Alfernada where we're ambushed by our stalker yet again. We put her in her place, then commence some much needed emotional bondage with our dragon before the gym. After getting more in touch with our fracture's feelings, we're able to challenge the gym leader Tulip. Is she big dogging me right now? She's not big dogging me right now. Two phones? What? I know Tulip is technically supposed to be a psychic type trainer, but low key, this lady is actually a fairy type specialist. Dazzling Gleam doesn't kill, right? Oh my god. Do we live this? Nothing can. <laughs> Nothing can survive this. Why is it faster than everything we have? Shift gear. Boost our attack. Oh, it gets the same stat boost. Oh, because I'm not even plus on attack. Or I'm not even plus on special attack. Rip. I got Big Dog in and out of battle. On our next attempt, we make sure to play it a little bit more safe. We take out our lead for Ridgeraf with Fracture, setting up two dragon dances after a lucky miss on its Zen headbutt. But even with our boosted attack, a crunch from Fracture is still not enough to one-shot our next Pokemon Gardevoir. Youch! Does this have, oh, this has U-turn. Oh, perfect. And we can U-turn out to a better Pokemon. Yes. We're able to use Shivers to take out her as Pathra, then find ourselves staring down her fairy type ace, Florges. After Shivers goes down, we bring in Cyclozar to instantly U-turn out. We repeat this process, sacrificing a few unlucky team members until we finally bring this thing down. After that battle, we're able to evolve a bunch of our favorite dragons to their final forms. Our team is becoming gigantic. Five foot 11, but standing straight up, 
6-6 for sure. Now finally, our team is actually starting to look like a real dragon squad. We continue our mastery of the Paldean dragons by catching a Skrelp that we evolve into a Draggle a Dratini, and a Noivern that we find in this hidden cave. The next gym leader is the ice type specialist Grusha, which is normally a laughably easy battle, but when your team is made up of entirely dragon Pokemon, ice starts to be a little bit scary. So before we go to take this battle on, we scour the land for useful TMs that we can use to counter Grusha's ice types. We teach Brick Break to Haxorus and Rock Slide to Garchomp, then get another round of dragon riding practice before the gym. Just before we head in to fight the gym leader, we have a little cheeky idea. We lead with Garchomp, which may seem a little strange given that it's four times weak to ice type attacks and all, but what this allows us to do on turn one is use the move Stealth Rock. This sets up a hazard that does big damage to Grusha's ice types as they switch in. Using the damage from these rocks, we're able to trade blows back and forth with Grusha until we're up against his Ace Altaria, and okay, we just lose. Maybe I was getting a little bit too fancy with the whole Stealth Rocks play. We take another L without setting up the rocks, but it seems doable. We swap out Flapple for another Pokemon who is also four times weak to ice type attacks, Noivern. But what Noivern does have going for it is the fact that it's faster than Grusha's Ace Altaria. This allows us to use this same strategy, battling through his first three Pokemon with Garchomp, Haxorus, and Shivers. Then against his Ace, we set up a Toxic with Draggle and get some decent damage with Noivern before it goes down. Then finally finish it off with one last blow from Cyclozar. Now that we've completed all eight gyms, we're invited to challenge the Pokemon League. Defeating the League would certainly be another impressive feat to add to our resume as we continue on our path to have our own gym. But we're getting ahead of ourselves here. There are still young children brazenly skipping school, massive monsters terrorizing the countryside, and most importantly, they all still have badges that we need to get. So the next stop on our quest is the Fairy-type Team Star Leader, Ortega. He may be extremely small, but his fairy types are going to be a serious problem. Not only do fairy type attacks hit dragons super effectively, but for some reason, fairy Pokemon are also completely immune to dragon type attacks. But not all hope is lost. Luckily, we have Draggle on our side, which is part poison type. Okay, yeah, this, this might be a little tough. We prep our team by teaching Haxorus Poison Jab and carefully selecting a squad of six dragons. Then we head into the base and commit mass murder until we're able to summon the leader Ortega. We lead with Flapple against his Azumarill, which lands a super effective Grab Apple, doing big damage and dropping its defense. Then for some reason, this Azumarill goes for a charm instead of just killing us with Play Rough, which lets us outspeed it and take it out with another Grab Apple on the following turn. Imbecile! And we are faster, okay. So Sick. Fool! Fool! Flapple living here is a huge win for us because it's able to get two grab apples off on Wigglytuff before going down, which allows our Haxorus to come in and finish it off. Next, he sends in his Doxbun, who hits us with a baby doll eyes, but then proceeds to get absolutely destroyed. <gasps> the poison is so clutch! Somehow we managed to get to his ace, only losing one single Pokemon. But we're not out of the woods yet. This fairy-type Reviverum can still easily sweep our team. Haxorus fights to the death, then we bring in Batty, who gets off two Super Fangs and a Tailwind before going down. With Tailwind set up, we're able to bring in Garchomp to get off a Bulldoze, but unfortunately we get screwed by Confusion and end up dying without being able to do too much else. With our back against the wall, it's all up to our last two Pokemon, Draggle G and Altaria. I didn't even teach it a poison move. Okay. That's not going to do very much. Okay, yeah, it did not do very much. We just really have to hope Altaria outspeeds. All right, Cloud9. You got it. You have to clutch this. Moonblast. Oh, we're faster, too. That's... Yes. Yes, we do this. As long as we don't get played by confusion. Please. Come on. All right, we live this, right? Yes, and we don't hit our... There's no way it happens twice, right? There's no way. There's no way. Yes! With Ortega's fairy types put into their rightful home in the dumpster, we make our way to the final team star base to battle the leader, Aerie. Along the way, we evolve our Dratini into a Dragonite whose flying type comes in handy as we take on the fighting type specialist. We lead with Dragonite and proceed to sweep our way through using Hurricane. It's not slow. What the heck? Good thing we have a backup plan. Batty's able to finish off this monkey. Oh, that didn't even kill. Oh no, we're gonna get ice punched. Please hit, please hit yourself. Oh. 
Okay then, luckily Teeth is able to clean up this Annihilate, then deal with her Lucario who knows Dragon Pulse for some reason. Then Garchomp comes in to clean up her Pissimian with a Dragon Claw. Now we find ourselves face to face with one of the strongest bosses in the game, Ares fighting type Revavroom. Garchomp gets some damage before going down, then our Altaria is able to come in and trade blows and finally finish it off with a Hurricane. With all the Team Star leaders defeated, we just have one final Titan left on the chopping block. And this one is personal. We get word that some big fish has been brazenly impersonating a real dragon. We head to Castle Royal Lake, evolve our Baxcalibur, then we summon the great big imposter itself, the false dragon duo Dondozo and Tatsugiri. Then we give these two a quick lesson in what a real dragon can do. Defeating that titan earns us the 18th and final badge, which accomplishes the first of our three goals. But there's no time to celebrate. After the battle, we get a call from the Professor Sada. She tells us that she's in danger and that the fate of the world rests on us being able to save her. The fate of the world, you say? Well, that sounds like a great way for us to accomplish our third goal. But before we can go and save her, we need to enlist the help of our three friends. And they say they won't help us until after we beat the Elite Four, so we go ahead and make our way over to do that. On our way out, we begrudgingly catch one of the tiny imposter dragons, which is one of the final three dragons remaining for us to tame. Have fun in the box, little guy! After we leave the lake, we begin to make our preparations for the Elite Four by heading to the Great Desert and destroying a few trainers to get the TM for Earthquake. Then we seek out some rain, which allows us to evolve our Sligu into a Gudra. And after all of that, we're finally ready to challenge the Elite Four. We pass our written exam, then face the ground-type trainer, Rika. You know, at the beginning of the game, I thought that Flapple was gonna fall off and be completely useless after a few gems. But it turns out that Flapple has something to say about that. Grab Grab apple! Grab apple! Grab apple! Grab apple! Grab apple! Wow, I can't believe Flapple actually swept. That's just gym leader stuff. Next into the octagon is the steel type trainer, Poppy. We lead with Haxorus, who's able to close combat down her Copperaja, but falls to her Corviknight after getting in a few blows. At this point, the bird is softened up enough that we're able to bring in Noivern to flamethrower it down. We two-shot her Magnezone with a few more flamethrowers, then trade a couple flamethrowers with Zen Headbrutts against her Bronzong to take it out. Finally, she sends in her Tinkaton, who terastalizes and misses two stone edges in a row, which allows us to easily finish it with a couple more flamethrowers. After Poppy, our good buddy Larry enters the fray. But this time around, he's changed over to be a full-time flying specialist. We lead with Garchomp to set up some stealth rocks, then rock slide down his lead Tropius. Next, he brings in Altaria, who falls to a single Dragon Claw. From here, we one-shot his Oracorio with a rock slide, but get outsped by a Staraptor and fall to a Brave Bird. We send him back Scalibur, who just barely isn't able to finish it off with an Ice Shard, so it ends up getting pummeled by a close combat before being able to finish it off on the following turn. Finally, his ace Flamigo comes in and terastalizes. It lives through our ice shard and takes out our Baxcalibur with a close combat, but goes down to Dragonite on the next turn. Finally, we have our matchup with... Wait, is that the old guy from Brassius' gym? <laughs> Excuse, Excuse me, me, old man, man I, have I have dragons, dragons to, catch. to catch. He wouldn't understand. And he's a dragon type trainer? Impossible. How did I not see this before? This might just be our greatest showdown yet. Thanks to his team being completely riddled with Pokemon that are four times weak to ice, we're able to use Ice Shard from our Baxcalibur to go first and one shot his Noivern and his Flapple. Then we Glaive Rush down his Draggle G. Unfortunately, this leaves us vulnerable as he brings in his Haxorus and outspeeds us to one shot Baxcalibur with a Dragon Claw. Not to worry though, we have our own own Haxorus, who's able to win the mirror match, taking it out with an Outrage. But then his ace back Scalibur comes in and narrowly survives our Outrage after terastalizing, which allows it to smack Haxorus with a Glaive Rush and finish it off. From here, we send in Noivern, who outspeeds it to finish it off with a super effective Dragon Pulse. <laughs> After those four battles, we have our showdown with the legendarily terrible champion and maybe our future boss, Gita. This is a showdown for the ages and we really need to prove ourselves to cement our position as a gym leader. Thankfully, her lead as Pathra can't stand up to our Baxcalibur and goes down to a crunch and an ice shard. Then we bring in Haxorus against her King Gambit to take it out with a close combat. Next up is Go-Goat, so we swap to Noivern as it bulks up. We miss a Hurricane on the following turn as it bulks up again. Finally, we're able to connect with a Hurricane 
Arcane, but it doesn't quite take it out, and this goat is able to finish off our Noivern with a single boosted play rough. We send back Scalibur back in and finish it with an Icicle Crash, but unfortunately she brings in our Avalug, which has the extremely threatening move Body Press. We nope our back Scalibur out of there and bring in Gudra, who destroys this guy with a single Fire Blast. Next in is Veluza, who trades Ice Fangs for Dragon Pulses, ultimately killing our Gudra. We bring in Dragonite, hoping to clean it up with a Hurricane that ends up missing, so we take massive damage from a four times effective Ice Fang before we're able to finish it off. Finally, she's down to just her Ace Glamora. We can taste victory, so we go for an Ice Spinner, but end up getting outsped and finished by a Sludge Wave. Teeth is almost able to take it out with a close combat, but ends up dying to a Dazzling Gleam. And finally, we bring in our Garchomp to clean it up with an Earthquake. With the Elite Four completed and the Champion hopefully impressed, we set off to enlist the help of our friends in saving the world. First up, we head to the school where we have a back and forth battle against the director out front. <laughs> oh, Guru, huh? What? Look at its stupid mouth hanging open. Imagine using that Pokemon. Whatever. Eating. Sleepy! Fire Blast kills. Never misses. God dang it. Fire Blast, please kill. Land? Yes! Gotcha. Oh, we're faster. Peace! And you're dead, son. I think it goes for a shell smash here. Oh. Oh, doesn't matter. Hit him with hurricane. Oh, nice. Imagine Giga Drain. Confused, maybe? No. Oh, it has ice spinner. What the heck, bro? Brick, break. Ow. What in the world? This thing's crazy. Kill him. Got him. Whew. After besting the director, we head in to battle the team star leader, Cassiopeia, who turns out to just be our friend, Penny. We cruise through her team of evolutions until we get to her ace, Sylveon, who kind of absolutely destroys Garchomp. But not to worry, Haxorus is able to come in and save the day, taking it out with a poison jab. From here, we head over to the professor's lab to get the Scarlet Book, which we need in order to save the professor. After grabbing the professor's book, we duke it out out front of the lab against Arvin. Haxorus takes out his Greedent and Garganackle with some close combat. Combats, then we send in back Scalibur to deal with his Toad School. But we end up switching into a Spore, which puts our Icy Boy to sleep for a few turns before it finally wakes up and destroys this thing with an Icicle Crash. Next, we one-shot his Scovillain with a Glaive Rush, then swap back to Haxorus to take out his Cloister with some close combats. Finally, his Ace Mabostiff comes in and Terastalizes. It takes less damage than you would think from a super effective close combat, then takes out Teeth with a Play Rough. Not to worry though, Garchomp comes in and cleans it up up with an earthquake. After embarrassing Arvin into helping his mom, we just have one last friend left to fight before we can go save the world. But before we do that, we're finally able to evolve our dino into one of the last dragons we have yet to tame. With Hydreigon joining the fray, we gear up for our final showdown with Nimona. Her lead Lycanroc goes down easily to an earthquake from Garchomp, then we one-shot her Gudra with the Dragon Claw. Oh, Palmot, why are you sending in all the Pokemon that die to Garchomp? You imbecile! You idiot! Oh, it's got Ice Punch. Unfortunately, this thing outspeeds our whole team, but luckily, Haxorus is able to live through a close combat and take this thing out with an Outrage. Next, her dude Dunsparce comes in and tanks an Outrage and takes out our Haxorus with the Dragon Rush. We send in Dragonite, who cleans it up with a Hurricane, and Nimona brings in her Earthworm. Uh, no, I mean, I'll, I'll swap after Dragonite dies. How about that? How about we try the Hurricane? Oh my god, that did a lot of damage. Oh, we got the Confused, too. Wait, this could be Clutch. No! <gasps> he didn't die! Oh, please hit yourself. Oh, it misses, though! Uh, imagine. Imbecile. Skaboot. Her ace Meowskarada is able to clean up Dragonite, but at this point, it's too little too late. Our Baxcalibur is able to come in and finish up the fight with an Icicle Crash. Now, after the dust is settled, we're able to enlist the help of our friends and head into the Great Crater to save the world, and more importantly, add that to our resume. We traverse this wild crater all the way down to the very bottom, where our friends promptly abandon us when things get tough. And we're forced to go in and face the Professor and her team of ancient hitters completely alone. Wow. 
Thanks guys! We battle through her team of 6 Pokemon all the way until we're staring down her ace Roaring Moon. Then our team proceeds to get swiftly swept as it outspeeds all the Pokemon that we have left. On our second attempt, Dragonite one-shots her Slitherwing, then she sends in Screamtail who freezes us with an Ice Punch? What? That's so obnoxious. From here, we send in back Scalibur, who trades a few blows before finishing it off with an Ice Shard. Next, she sends in her Fluttermane, who somehow manages to outtrade our Gudra, so we have to bring in Garchomp and finish it with an Earthquake. Then her Brute Bonnet comes in and dies to Haxorus, same with her second to last Pokemon, Sandy Shocks. Finally, she's down to just her ace, Roaring Moon. Uncertain if we have any path to victory at this point, we keep Haxorus in. We know we're probably going to die, but we let the Outrage play out. Out. Just before the Roaring Moon swings for the killing blow, our Quick Claw activates, allowing Haxorus to go first and one-shot this thing with a super effective outrage. After the battle, Sada is badly injured, but the game isn't quite over yet. The security system in the area activates and her evil Coridon steps into the fray. With our back against the wall, our own Coridon decides to finally do something and help us out. This battle shows how ridiculously OP friendship is in these new Pokemon games. We're able to tank multiple hits despite being on 1 HP for half the battle and take the fight home. That means that the world is saved, but our challenge isn't complete quite yet. We still have one thing left to do. After the credits roll, we head back to the crater and traverse down to the bottom, where we find a secret cave. Inside, we find the final dragon left for us to catch. Hello, friendo. Oh, we got a master ball. That's perfect. Get in the ball! And with that, we have accomplished all three of our goals and unofficially, officially become a dragon-type gym leader in Paldea. Like the video and subscribe to the channel. Till next time.